say a prayer we give you thanks almighty god for bringing the people that you brought into your house today thank you that you have given them hunger and thirst for your word and righteousness and peace and i know lord you will do that you will give those things because you promise that as we gather in your name you are present and you're present to give us peace in christ's name we pray amen genesis 31 we are back in genesis it's been a um, a break we took a few weeks off so to catch us up on things <clears throat> that are happening uh, we we're back to um, to Jacob and uh, things are deteriorate, deteriorating deteriorating at one of them <laughs> and uh, Jacob is um, he's ready to go he's gonna um, 31. Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying, Jacob has taken everything our father owned and has gained all this wealth from what belonged to our father. How did he gain that wealth? Well, uh, you remember that he had that set up with uh, speckled and uh, spotted uh, livestock and, and uh, the, two, the, two, uh, the two deceivers uh, were going at it, Jacob and Laban. Uh, Laban, uh, uh, Jacob finally met his match, and um, um, anyway, he uh, uh, he got what he wanted. Meanwhile, Laban was trying to get what he wanted. Uh, they're trying to outdo each other in their deception, but uh, Jacob got the upper hand. And uh, he, uh, he multi his, uh, multiplied uh, 43 of preceding chapter, right? Genesis 30, 43. In this way, the man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and maid servants and man servants and camels and donkeys. So uh, Jacob has been blessed. Why? Well, because God blessed him. Why did God bless him? Well, <laughs> not because Jacob was the best guy in the world. But so they go on and uh, they're, about, they're gonna uh, pack their bags. And Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude toward him was not what it had been. Uh, then the Lord said to Jacob, go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives and now I will be with you. So if there's any second thoughts about where he needs to go for Jacob, he is done. God says, you need to go. So Jacob sent word to Rachel and Leah, uh, Leah to come out to the fields where his flocks were. He said to them, I see that your father's attitude toward me is not what it was before, but the God of my father has been with me. All right, so you got this kind of, a, again, a summary. Uh, the guy doesn't like me, your daddy doesn't like me anymore, and my God who loves me wants me to go. Six, you know that I've worked for your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me by changing my wages 10 times. So again, we talked about, this is just a review, so we're going fast. We talked about that, that this is the first time we hear kind of like more of a close accounting of what's happening, but apparently 10 times uh, his father-in-law cheated him. However, God has not allowed him to harm me. If he said the speckled ones will be your wages, then all the flocks gave birth to speckled young and if he said the strict ones will be your wages then all the flocks bore strict young so you remember that whole setup that uh, uh, doesn't make scientific sense but uh, apparently God was behind it with all those sticks and striped things and all that stuff that that preceding chapter uh, who you know again it's not it's not something you should try at home with your with your uh, livestock, uh, it's not gonna work. You got uh, a white cat and a white cat and you're not gonna put out sticks, that stripey sticks and get stripey cats. Uh, but unless God is behind it and that's the case. Nine, so God has taken away your father's livestock and has given them to me. So <laughs> again, uh, Laban was trying to cheat uh, uh, Jacob out of, uh, remember the whole stuff with the, they're like, you know, they're moving, uh, he's moving his stuff, livestock around and all that farmer stuff and uh, livestock show and rodeo there going on and 
going about to, to uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, in Bre 10, in breeding season, I once had a dream in which I looked up and saw that the male goats mating with the flock were streaked, speckled, or spot spotted. The angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, I answered, here I am. And he said, look up and see that all the male goats mating with the flock are streaked, speckled, or spotted. For I have seen all that Laban has been doing to you. I'm the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. So God arranged it for Jacob to succeed in his setup, in his scheme there with a streaked, speckled, and spotted livestock. So that's, that's how it worked. Again, don't try it at home, uh, but it worked for him. <coughs> so then Rachel, yeah, do an IV. Len, Rachel and Leah replied, do we still have any share in the inheritance of our father's estate? Uh, well, no, he don't. That's the implied answer. Uh, does he not regard us, as, uh, regard us as foreigners? Not only has he sold us, but he has uh, used up what was paid for us. Uh, surely all the wealth that God took away from our father belongs to us and our children. So do whatever God has told you. We talked about how the two of them really did not have a good relationship, right? Um, with each other. They had that baby making race. Uh, see who's going to outdo each other and uh, who's going to win. Um, in what well, Leah's case, she was trying to win um, Jacob's love. You win my love. But that never, he never sang that Shania Twain song to her. So that never happened. So, the, it, but now the conflict is put aside, and um, they said, well, our dad, he really is no good. The wealth that is due us is gone. So, uh, we love you. We're going to move on. Uh, 17, then Jacob put his children and his wives on camels, and he drove all his livestock ahead of him along with all the goods he had accumulated at Padama Ram to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. When Laban had gone to shear his sheep, Rachel stole her father's household goods. Gods, gods, I'm sorry. Moreover, Jacob deceived Laban, there mean, by not telling him he was running away. So he fled with all he had and crossing the river, he headed for the hill country of Gilead. Let's see, this is where we, um, I think this is where we stopped, somewhere, let's see here, um, yeah, so uh, you have this, uh, let me get my notes on this phone, my, oh, because I'm not connected to the internet again, I'm sorry, I'll make it work. That's why I bring my phone. One, one of these days we'll have it, guys and ladies. All right, here it is. All right, let's see, we stopped at, uh, we talked about the, how Jacob, he really went from what? Being a, a man on a run. I think that's the last thought we've shared with you. He, uh, he, he was empty handed when he came to his, uh, the land of his mom, mom's relatives. And, uh, and now in the end, he benefits from being in the exile. And that, Again, we, thought, we talked about how that echoes the story of whom? Abraham and Sarah. Every time <coughs> they went into exile, they, in Egypt or to Abimelech, they, uh, in the end, they come out golden. 
they, uh, uh, they're blessed. And why are they blessed? Because God blesses them. It's not because they're good people, right? In fact, both times in Egypt and with Abimelech, they are caught in the lie. Both times, uh, they're, uh, they're not telling the truth, but God blesses them. Why? Because that's how God works. That's what we figured. Um, and again, this is an illustration that God gives pe people. He blesses people when they seem to be hitting the, the bottom. Um, and he does for them when they least expect it. Uh, but, but because of who he is, not because of who they are. Um, now, did Jacob deserve any of this stuff that he received? He did not. Again, you have this Olympics, and we'll see that as the chapter unfolds. Uh, there's competition between the two of them. Uh, who's going to uh, <laughs> who's going to sound more credible as they both lie and cheat and uh, try to get out of things? Uh, so is Jacob a picture of uprightness and righteousness? No, he's not. And, and the last question I asked you last time, is he making God proud? <laughs> no. And th that's the thing is like, as you look at the stories of Abraham and Sarah, and uh, Isaac and uh, their interaction sometimes with, with the outside world, they're not really making a good name for the Lord, are they? I'm like, uh, they're like, do uh, you believe in God? Yeah, I do. Well, isn't that your sister? Not, or is it your wife? Oh, oh well, never mind. <laughs> like, and, and so the, and probably uh, the, 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 the Gentiles are like, what's with this man of God and their women? How come they always say that it's my sister? And why do they do it <laughs> again and again? So they're, they're not really making their, their Heavenly Father proud, you know. He's not going to uh, tell them that. So what does it tell you about God then in relation to his people, in relation to sinners? He loves yeah, he loves despite the ugliness of sins. And uh, he keeps his promises. And you see this again and again. That, uh, this is how many times have we seen that, that uh, this is not a text about the beauty and uh, uprightness and uh, the attractiveness of the people of God. It's about their ugliness and the ugliness of sin and the beauty of God's mercy and grace. Because there's just nothing that Jacob does that deserves this kind of blessing. And in fact, he does the opposite. Just like his dad, just like his grandpa and grandma. Uh, in fact, you might quote and coin the phrase, he deserves punishment, right? Temporal and eternal punishment for all those things. Uh, again, how did he end up at his uncle's home? Because he deceived and he had to run away because he lied to his father. He lied to his brother. And his mom covered it up and said, well, you need to get out of town. You need to leave town. You need to take off. And, and, um, and he goes. And despite all this, as he goes, God lavishes the blessings upon him. Now, what about Laban? What's Laban's take on this? What do you, how, what do you think he thinks about Jacob? Cash cow. Cash cow we talked about, yeah. Does he, does, do you think Laban likes Jacob? He's a deceiver like me. Yeah, he's like, oh man, this is kind of interesting. He's a deceiver and I know like he's playing these, I, mean, I, I could just picture them, right? All right, I'm gonna do this with the flock. Uh, I'll, I'll tell my sons to move them a certain way. Yeah, you know, that's speckled stuff. What is it? He's probably like, <laughs> sometimes you're trying to outsmart yourself, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah, 
What else? What else do you think Labour is uh, thinking about? Uh, and, and I think, don't you think he probably is asking, why is God bless, blessing this man? Why is God blessing Jacob? Uh, and I would say that probably Laban is jealous, isn't he? He's like, what is this? Why is this guy? Everything he touches turns into gold. He sets up this arrangement that I should clearly be benefiting from with this livestock uh, selection. He's like, I'm all set, but what, what is this? What's going on? So <coughs> he is a, and again, I think Laban, just like all of us, he doesn't see himself as a bad guy. He's like, I'm doing the right thing. Uh, and you will see that as the chapter goes on and, and, uh, and uh, Jacob flees with his wives and, and Laban catches up and, and Laban's like, uh, man, I've been such a great, I'm, I'm a, such a family man, you know, and here you are leaving and I wanted to kiss my grandkids goodbye and I wanted, I wanted, to, have a, I wanted to have a farewell party for my daughters and uh, why, would, why would you leave, Jacob? Uh, he, he actually says that. You will see that. He, he is like, he's, he's convinced that he is like a, he's this patriarch that all he wants is for people in his family to be blessed and, and he is being wronged by this dude. This, this, you know, we talked about that, that dynamic, I think. Uh, that was one of my opening questions about what is it about relationship with your in-laws that is such a strain thing that there's so many jokes at least right yeah, there's a uh, there's a little bit of joke in every joke right most of it is true uh, and so you see this this made me think uh, the, a story of prodigal son and the brother the older brother that the father is blessing the younger son when he comes back, even though the younger son is a deceiver. He's a liar. He, he takes away the, what the older brother says, well, it should have been mine. Why is he coming back to, to take it? Why are you blessing him? Shouldn't he de be doing something to deserve this kindness? But uh, the father just blesses him. Uh, and does the older brother in the story of the prodigal son have a good point? Would you not agree with him? Well, the prodigal son, did he not take what the father gave him? Right, he but he squandered it, right? And he took he, he wasted away. And then instead of, when he comes back, instead of lecturing him, right? Or saying, well, you, well, you, you, you took the, what was owed you. Why are you coming back? And what, what you, you know, he has a good point. And I think Laban would have the same point, too. Um, that, um, and, and that's how the world operates, right? If you do good, you're supposed to get rewarded. If you do bad, you get punished. And of course, uh, in Laban's eyes, he's doing everything proper, <laughs> right? And you'll see that. I mean, he's convinced that he is, he's in the right. And uh, Jacob and his daughters, I mean, they're so ungrateful. I mean, he is just a, he is a wick, uh, uh, victim. Um, of course, the irony is that what kind of, what kind of a man is Laban? Is he an upright, righteous man? No, he's not. He's a, he, yeah, he, he's a scheming. Remember, what, what, is, what, are, they do, what, what are his daughters saying? Yeah, that he sold us. I mean, he only got us, uh, gave it, gave us up uh, to get the, to get, to get rich. He sold us, and remember how he set the uh, old Jacob up, right? Uh, he's like, oh uh, yeah, I, I fell in love with Rachel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're gonna have a ceremony, <laughs> and we're gonna have a feast, and uh, and uh, and he wait, who who are you? <laughs> like, Leah, uh, and then and Laban's like, wait a minute. 
That's, that's the tradition, boy. That's how it's done for generations. What, what are you trying to do? I mean, he, I think Laban's convinced that he's, he's doing good. He's, he's got his daughter married and, uh, and you know, that whole stuff, and, all right? So that's, that's just, uh, that's how it goes. Okay. Um, and then, um, uh, and you know, and this is kind of, the, this is how we feel, don't we? If somebody messes up, they need to be punished. If you hear about somebody um, that uh, done something bad, well, then you should sit in the corner, you know? How dare they come, right? It's interesting that I've heard, from, have you ever heard? I've heard from people, I would see them in the community, right? And I'd say, I haven't seen you at St. John's. And they would say, I don't wanna come back, why? Well, so and so might say so this and that about me, right? Have you ever heard that? Yeah. And I should, you know, and you have to work with that. It's it's people think that way um, because we do have this big brother syndrome, right? Um, again, is it okay to forgive the prodigal son? I think the older brother would have said, "Yeah, that's that's fine. Forgive him." But why are you giving him the robe and the ring? And what about this feast that are throwing for him? What, I've never had anything like that, and I've been with you the whole time. That's so unfair, right? All right. All right, so now they go, they're gone, 19, right? <clears throat> I think this is where we begin, according to my notes. Uh, now, why are they leaving when they're leaving? Yeah, but then again, what's 19 says? That when oh. Laban yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and the shearing sheep, apparently, is it an easy task? Oh, no. No, it's not. So, <laughs> they're like, they pick the right time uh, to, to take off uh, because with all the sheep and all that stuff, it would take a lot of people up, resources, and so, Everybody's gone, um, and uh, Laban is distracted by all this uh, people and, and all the sheep and all that stuff, right? Uh, so they they take they take they pack up um, and uh, twenty. In case we were wondering, uh, Jacob deceived Laban. I mean, this is a same same story. You know, it's all about deception. <coughs> And then again, and uh, that little nugget, that little Easter egg is gonna um, open up in a little bit. What does Rachel do? Steals the household gods. Yeah, she steals the gods, the idols, and uh, we don't know what they were. Later on, you will see it's something that, it's not some, you know, big, golden calves or anything like that because she hides it under the saddle and then she you know makes a reference you will see the it, it, it gets really <laughs> funny kind of um, so we don't know what Laban is is doing with with uh, those gods but uh, apparently there's some kind of a important thing household gods um, did he use them for um, some kind of a protection um, I think um, uh, somewhere before you know he talked about that uh, uh, that uh, divination uh, right Laban says like he kind of communicates with with a with a outer I mean outer, <laughs> outer rib, uh, higher power there I don't know who knows what it is um, so yeah, he, he's like yeah, he is kind of like uh, on the same at the same time God is going to talk to him. So that's an interesting thing. You'll see that in a little bit. Uh, but um, uh, the the NIV and the ESV, I think they kind of miss the point a little bit. Uh, I like the King James and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father. So they're not, in Hebrew, they're not like true gods. And um, the word 
uh, I have it in my notes, teraphin. Um, it's not the same. It's not. It's meant to be used when you try to insult something. Okay, these idols, and it comes from the word, not from God. Okay, it's not like just the God with a small g. It's a completely different Hebrew word that is uh, from a verb that means to decay or to become foul, all right? And you will see that's what they end up being in kind of under Camel, under Rachel, that during her menstrual cycle. I mean, they're like, they're meant to be made fun of. So it's not like, the, oh, this is my deities. No, this is some foul things some completely useless, worthless things, futilities, or even shameful things, because what, the, what happens to them is pretty shameful, okay? Uh, and so when the scripture sp speaks of false gods, and when it says gods, it doesn't just say, well, they're just like God, but it's a small g. It's not, it's a completely different word. Okay, that's just what I want to call your attention to them. Now, why would she steal them? What's your guess? What was she trying to do? Make him, mad. Make him more mad? Is that a good plan? Nope. It doesn't, doesn't pan out, because you'll see that he he's really after many things, but mainly after his, his God, because that's the last thing that he brings up when he catches up with Jacob. Um, why else might she steal him? I don't know. Um, Maybe she, maybe he thought that was his good luck, his good luck charms, right? You know, he was kind of, a, kind of like a superstitious man, I think. And uh, she thinks, oh, I'm gonna steal his good, good luck charms, right? Um, like, um, I, you know, uh, I haven't, I've never been into sports, but if you watch movies and shows, don't athletes have some kind of a superstitious tokens that they do, like, you know, they don't wash, don't shave until they win the championship, or don't change their socks, you know, like all those things. So maybe, you know, maybe, you know, there's a little bit of a superstitious, uh, superstitiousness in all of us, so, um, you know, and, and maybe, maybe some in you. I don't know, maybe some in me. Um, and so, uh, now, they, um, uh, they're leaving. And, and one, one interesting detail there in 21 that needs to, to be uh, brought up is that, what are they doing? Read it again. What are they crossing? The river. The river. So you have this, it's Euphrates River, but you have this theme now, again, this is a little Easter egg for us to, to recognize that as they're going into now, this is the Exodus. You know, it's a little, little foreshadow of the Exodus because they're leaving and uh, uh, they're in exile, Jacob is in exile, and he is leaving the exile to go back to where? To home, to his, to his land, to the promised land, and he is crossing this body of water. And then, of course, that's gonna happen in the Exodus. You have uh, the uh, exile, you have the, the leaving, and you have the body of water, and guess what? You have the, the pursuit. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a chase happening, and so this is what's happening there. And, uh, and uh, he kind of experiences in his own person what the people uh, of God will experience later on. All right, moving on, 22 and on. On the third day, Laban was told that Jacob had fled, taking his relatives with him. He pursued Jacob for seven days and caught up with him in the hill country of Gilead. Then God came to Laban there, me and in a dream at night, and said to him, be careful not to say anything to Jacob, <coughs> either good or bad. Kind of cryptic message. <coughs> so what happens? 
What's happening with Laban at this point? Why is he pursuing Jacob? He's mad, okay? Now, do you think he is, he, later on, it's kind of setting us up. Do you think he really misses his daughters at this point? Yes. Is he really like, oh, I miss my girls and those grandkids? No, no, he's not. He's like, I'm going to load up. Yeah, I'm going to load up my, my fam, you know, my gang. My, my, my relatives, my cousins, you know, I could just say, cousin, you coming? <laughs> you know, like, saddle up, boys. <laughs> we ride and dawn. <laughs> and they, they ride, you know. Uh, and, and you can see that they're not, you know, he, he's not going to, and that's why God stops him, right? It's not like, it's not like God says, okay, go, you, go on, Laban, because I know you're going to, uh, you're going to say the right thing to them, you know, um, Vaya con Dios, yeah. right? Go with God. Uh, so he's, you know, he's angry. Why is he angry? Again? Yeah, of wealth. Money, <laughs> money. So he's driven by money. He's like, uh, this is, there goes my income <laughs> that uh, I, I've milked for all those years, what, 14 years, right? And uh, the, the, there goes my, I, you know, and he's probably like righteously upset because the guy just, uh, you know, he uses, uses me. He knew I was busy, right? I, I was about, uh, uh, I, was, I was really uh, doing my, uh, taking care of the family, you know, take care of the livestock. Uh, and here's this deceitful guy again. And I'm, a, I, I'm such a victim, you know. Um, now, was La again, again, very interesting. Was Laban a believer in God? Well, after the dream, he might I, I, have been. <laughs> well, I don't think so. But it's interesting that you can't say that Laban, he kind of makes references, right, to, to God and kind of inserts him. Um, I think he kind of have this, he has this uh, belief in the, divine power mm -hmm. you know he talked about with Jacob you know I was doing this divination right uh, by it was revealed to me and all that stuff and uh, we don't know if he really did that or some kind of you know with his idols maybe he's like some sort of a voodoo black magic guy I don't know but very interesting I just thought that yet God speaks to him right um, you know, and, and maybe you've been around people like that. Nowadays you call an agnostic. Maybe agnostic or maybe they kind of talk generically about God. They're kind of like almost on the same page as you. They kind of have kind of acknowledgement and so, some sort of respect for a divine power, higher power, right? But they can't truly confess the Lord. They don't believe in the triune God. Um, but it's interesting that what? God still speaks to them. And he causes them to do what he wants to be done. And again, I don't have like a, a deep Bible study. I just thought that this is, this is interesting. That God, even though Laban, I don't, again, I don't think Laban has displayed any kind of um, confession of faith. Certainly not in the, in the seed, in the promised Messiah, and you will see later on just a few sentences down the road, he is really ticked off about his gods. And if he truly believed in God, he could care less about those gods that she stuck under the saddle, right? Uh, Rachel did. Yet God uses even the unbelieving people to accomplish. Has he done it before? Yes, he has, right? Just we talked about Sarah and Abraham. You know, it was revealed to them, and, and, and God continues to work. And that just made me realize, or just kind of reminded me, that, uh, that God can even... One time we were praying, 
we were at some meeting, I think it was like a Lutherans for Life thing, and the pastor's, pastor's servant, not servant, but his prayer was, God, change something like change our enemies, change their minds. If not, then confound them. What does the word confound mean? Confuse them. Cause them to stumble. You know, they're your enemies, they're my enemies, they're our enemies. If they can't repent, if they can't see the light, then you confuse them more. How about that? Good prayer. Maybe he does, doesn't he? That's what he does here. All right. Um, let's see. Anything else in 22 through 24 that you see? Otherwise, we'll move on to 25. <coughs> Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country of Gilead when Laban overtook him, and Laban and his relatives camped there too. <laughs> yeah. I know, it says relatives, you think like, you know, they're having a family reunion. <laughs> but to me, it's more like, uh, you know, like uh, the godfather and his relatives there. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, the, the family. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the godfather wrote in and the, his, everybody else, you know. Uh, all right, so the family. Relatives camp there, too. They have a little camp there, you know, we camp out, yeah, grilling a little barbecue. Then Laban said to Jacob, what have you done? You've deceived me, and you've carried off my daughters like captives in war. Why did you run off secretly and deceive me? Why didn't you tell me? So I could send you away with joy and sing into the music of tambourines and harps. You didn't even let me kiss my grandchildren and my daughters goodbye. You can just picture him crying, right? I mean, he's just like, and he's like, where are my daughters? Where are my grand? Come here, come here. <laughs> and they're like, what's this guy, guy doing? You have done a foolish thing. I have the power to harm you. <laughs> so he's like uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll and, and Hyde there. You know, he, he goes from sweet and crying to like, yeah, he's like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I, I could kill you. I'm ready to kill you. But the only thing that stopped me, I have the power to harm you. But last night, the God of your father said to me, be careful not to say anything to Jacob, neither good nor bad. Now you have gone off because you long to return to your father's house. But why did you steal my gods? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you can just like, what, what is this guy talking about? And you can see Jacob's like, what are you talking about? And he didn't know about gods, by the way. So it's like, a, okay, our time is up. So we'll just stop. Isn't it cool? I mean, this is, this is fun. To, to read those, uh, they're just such, such characters. Uh, Laban is like, he's like, he, he's crying, and, and you can just picture him, you know, like sometimes they have like uh, stereotypes, you know, he's like sitting there, some of the movies, you know, and I love you, but boom, it comes out the gun, right? I just right. pictured that, you said the whole Godfather thing where yeah. he kisses the people before yeah. he has them. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? He's yeah, 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 and you can just see that. Yeah. He's like, Jacob, come kiss my hand. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes like, and he like starts smacking him a little boy. <laughs> and then his smacks become a little bit harder. And I, I really miss my daughters. And where are my grandkids? I could have just killed you. <laughs> he just like, boom, <laughs> next sentence. All right, so anyway. And again, is he wrong in his assessment of what's happening with Jacob? Did he deceive him? He did. Yet God, somehow, for whatever reason, was right there to tell him, you better not touch him. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Well, All right. Yeah. Any thoughts? Well, what you were talking about earlier about how they were acting towards each other when they were in the camp, because of that, um, 
comment he made about taking my daughters off like they were cats and more. Yeah. It put me in mind of them sitting in their own tents like generals. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, working out how to get around each other. Yeah. If you will. You know, how to win. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, you know, and then Lincoln comes and he's ready for war. That's why you left him. Yeah. To me, that word just says a whole lot as to his mindset. Yeah. He's ready to fight. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, come back next week, or we'll continue with this exciting story. All right. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for reminding us that just like you chose and blessed Jacob, not because he is a, such an upright man, you chose us, and you continue to bless us, not because we're so righteous, but because of your promise to us and because of the gift of faith you have given to us. Thank you for reminding us of this pure gospel. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.